Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to this uh, little session on the new AMC Vita interview. My name is Dr. James Wasco, and my clinical practice has been in emergency medicine, but I've worked with medical admissions for a medical school for 15 years now. And in my role at the medical school, I actively review applications and interview applicants. I've worked for Kaplan for about 18 months as a medical school applications advisor. So congratulations on deciding on a medical career. It's a challenging career and a very rewarding one too. And it's a career where you can have lifetime learning and really make a difference in people's lives. The application for medical school, as you know, is very long and very involved, and it involves primary and secondary applications. And an interview uh, is given to prospective candidates that are deemed worthwhile for the particular medical school. And those interviews are typically long form, which is a one-on-one -on -one sort of 30 minute interview and some short interactive experiences, which we call MMI. And new to the process this year though, is a new tool called VITA. Now, VITA stands for Video Information Tool for Admissions. And it was developed by the Association of American Medical Colleges uh, after collaboration with a number of medical school deans and other instructors at the medical school. VITA is a one-way, one-time recorded video interview. There is no interviewer present, it's just you and the camera. So why VITA? Well, it'll help medical schools get another tool to assess applicants' pre-professional competencies and just see if you're the kind of candidate that they are looking for for their school. So what about the format of VITA? Well, it's the same for everyone, and basically it's an applicant and their computer. There will be no interviewer involved, and you'll get six questions and they'll be presented as text prompts. And they're separate with space between uh, the questions and responses. You'll have one minute to review each prompt and three minutes to respond. Now these questions are not tailored to specific schools and it's gonna be one sitting if you want, you can do all six responses at one time or you can break it up into several sittings as long as you have it done or completed by the time that the medical school has given you a deadline. So when you've finished answering the questions, you will tell the computer that you are done by checking, I'm done. And then the medical schools will review your, respons your responses. And uh, one time is it. So generally, once you're finished, that's your, that's your interview on Vita. If you weren't satisfied with that interview, you will have the opportunity to retake it but then you'll be given a new invite. And we'll talk about the invitations in a moment. So what are the focus of the prompts? What kind of text prompts will you get? Well, they're going to be basically personal experience questions or past behavior questions, situations you've been involved in, actions you've taken, or outcomes that you've had. And they may be situational judgment questions. These are basically hypothetical questions that will ask you maybe describe a time when you were in conflict with someone else, or how did you resolve a problem? What did you do? And you might even be asked to give your own hypothetical prompt and then answer it. Now, the order of questions will always be the same. The first question, text prompt, will be on your journey to medical school. Now that means uh, why or how you decided on medical school. Uh, what were some important steps along the way? What important experiences did you have? And what have you learned from your path to medical school? Would you do it the same way or are there things that you were changed? So that's the first question on journey to medical school. The second one will be on social skills. That means sort of how do you relate to others? What social and behavioral clues guide your interpersonal reactions, uh, your reactions with others? How do you respond to others? How do you guide your comments when you're talking with other people? The third one is going to be on resilience and adaptability. Now, this is a question that's going to have to have you think about how you've adapted to challenges, how you've overcome obstacles, and how you've adapted to changes that have occurred in your life. Persistence and commitment when the going gets rough, that's an important thing to think about. And lastly, stress. How do you tolerate it? How do you deal with it? All of those things relate to resilience that you have and the adaptability that you have. It's an important characteristic for medical school. The fourth question will be on teamwork. And it may relate to any sort of team, if you've been a part of an athletic team or a fraternity or sorority, or maybe 
an academic or cultural team, uh, then you'll know what this question really relates to. So basically it's gonna be on how do you collaborate with others to produce a desired result? How do you share information with others? If you've had a leadership role, how do you get a team to work together? That means how do you deal with shy people, uncooperative people, or others who just won't be quiet and who are too loud and sort of disrupt the team? All those are important areas to consider when you want a good outcome in a team. The fifth question will be on reliability and dependability. And that means that for you, um, think about why people depend on you. What tasks have you been given? And why did they decide to give you that task? And what does sharing responsibility mean? What does taking responsibility mean? What does it mean to you? And what would you do in the case where you were asked to do something that you didn't feel capable of doing? And finally, the last question will be on cultural competence. Now, cultural competence as defined by medical schools has many dimensions, but basically it's going to be the awareness of social, social rather, and cultural differences between people, respect for the many dimensions of diversity, uh, learning by working with other people and learning multiple viewpoints, and how to act and interact with people who have different backgrounds and experiences than you. Now, the questions will always be in that same order. The first one on journey to medical school, the second on social skills, the third on resilience, adaptability, the fourth teamwork, the fifth reliability, dependability, and lastly, cultural competence. So although there are many different questions that could be asked, those domain, domains will stay the same. But within each of the six domains, there are many questions which could be asked. So you may not get the same questions in the same domain as a friend of yours or someone else. The important thing though, when dealing with the VITA interview is that you really don't discuss your experiences with anyone, or if it's found out, your interview could be determined to be null and void. So will all schools require VITA? And the simple answer to that is no. There are a certain number of participating schools and the number is changing all the time. Um, and every applicant to a school that's participating may not get an invitation to the VITA interview but rather it's sent to those applicants that the medical school has felt deserve an interview in order for them to take the next step. The school will establish a deadline for the completion of VITA based upon when you are going to be interviewed. Now you should know that there's really no cost for participating students this year, and that's because all of you have had a major issue with COVID and the disruptions that have occurred in your planning process so the AAMC, which sponsors VITA, and the medical schools are interested in giving you as much assistance as they can. And so it's going to be a free interview for this year. Now the medical schools themselves are not going to be administering the VITA interview. In fact, it's going to be done by a firm named Hire View. That's H-I-R-E and V-U-E. Hire View will be administering the testing. So the way it will work is when a medical school decides on you as a candidate for an interview, they will notify HireVue, and then HireVue will send an interview application to the student, to the applicant, uh, and will enter you into their interview platform. They will also instruct you as to how to check your technology, how to prepare for the interview, and go from there. So meanwhile, how do you prepare? What should you be doing to think about VITA right now? Well, first of all, I would go to the AAMC website. That's aamc.org website and look up VITA, V-I-T-A. There'll be plenty of information there by the organization that sponsored and developed VITA, and it will allow you to get as much information as you can. Uh, and that's as much information actually that's available. And they also make available to you a practice interview format so you can be familiar with the platform, how it works, and you can actually do it as often as you like so that you're familiar with the situation of having a one minute to review prompt and then three minutes to respond. Now, you may not take three minutes. You may take a minute and a half or two minutes. Uh, you're not gonna have dead air between then and the end of the three minutes, but you will just notify uh, by pushing the button that says done, and that will let the technology know that you are finished with your response. 
Uh, if you are currently involved with Kaplan and you want to discuss Vita a little bit more directly with someone like me who's worked with Vita and with medical students, then you can please discuss it with your Kaplan counselor. Um, another way uh, to think about it is to review the 15 core competencies that entering medical students are expected to have. If you're not familiar with those core competencies, and they're things like empathy, compassion, teamwork, how to communicate with others, how to respect other people, and there's 10 or 11 other competencies, then you can also go to the AAMC.org website and download the 15 core competencies. Review them, find out what your experiences have been with those competencies, and that will help you decide and prepare how to respond to the VITA interview. Practically speaking, when you decide to take VITA, you'll be asked to have a disruption-free environment. You really should dress well, be well-groomed, and make sure that your wired connection, and that's not depending on Wi-Fi, but a wired connection will be sound and let you get through all the questions um, in good shape. If you've got any further questions about VITA um, or any comments about this video, uh, please enter them uh, below. In the meantime, though, I'd like to uh, give you good luck when you take the VITA interview, if offered, and good luck in your application for medical school.